This is part 95 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to order table changes in SQL Server using a DDL trigger. So here is what we want to do. We want to keep track of all table changes that are happening across all our databases in a given SQL Server instance. For example, when somebody creates a new table, we want to capture all this information. We want to capture the name of the database in which that table is created, the table name itself, and what's the event type, whether it is create table, alter table, or drop table, the login name associated with the person who made that change, the exact transact SQL command that they have executed, and what is the date and time when that change happened. In order to achieve this, we're going to make use of this event data function. So what is this event data function? Now to understand this, let's take an example. When we create a table, we know that a DDL event is triggered and that event is create underscore table. Now this event data function is going to return us the data associated with that DDL event. And it's going to return that in an XML format. And this is how the data is going to look like. Let's actually look at this in action. So here I've got a trigger. The name of the trigger is TR underscore audit table changes. And this is a server scoped trigger. And this will fire in response to create table, alter table, and drop table events. And if you look at what this trigger is doing, it's simply selecting whatever this event data function returns. So let's go ahead and create this trigger. So now if we create a table, this trigger will fire and it's going to return the data associated with this create table event in an XML format. Let's look at that in action. So here we have create table statement. So when I execute that, notice we get the event data in an XML format. And when I click on that, notice that we get the event data. So first we have the event type. So create table is the event type post time, so whenever this change happened, the server process ID, the server name, login name, username, database name, schema name, object name, that is our table name, object type, and the exact transact SQL command that we have executed. So now we can use this XML data, retrieve whatever pieces of information that we want, and store them in this audit table. So the first thing to do now is create this audit table. And here I've got the SQL script to create that table. So I'm going to execute this script. And notice we are creating this table in sample DB database. And look at this, when I created this table changes table, and again we have the XML data associated with that create table event. Okay, and now we have to write the trigger to read that XML information and then insert that XML data into our audit table. And here I have that trigger already. So TR audit table changes is the name of the trigger. It's server scoped. And this trigger is going to respond to these three events. And look at what we are doing within the body of the trigger. We are creating a variable of type XML and the name of the variable is event data. And in this variable, we are storing whatever event data this function is going to return. And then we are inserting data into table changes table. Now it's very important that we give the fully qualified name here because this is a server scoped trigger. Now if you just specify the name of the table, you know, it is not going to find that table. You have to give it the fully qualified name, the database name, the schema name, and the actual table name. And here are the columns for that table for which we want to insert the values. And notice to retrieve the values from the XML, we are using the value function and we are specifying the X path here. So if you look at this XML data, all this event data is present in this event instance root element, right? So here we are saying, you know, go to event instance and within that we have database name, retrieve that. So within event instance, we have database name and the name of the database is sample DB. So it's going to retrieve that. And if you're wondering what is this numerical number one, you can think of this one as select top one in transact SQL. So this is going to return the database name and we want that to be converted to varchar of 250. That's the data type. And then we are going to you know, insert that into this table.
Similarly, we are retrieving the object name, that is the table name in our case, and then the event type, login name, transact SQL command, and the date and time when that change happened. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute this one. Now, we already have that my table, right? So I'm going to alter that. At the moment, if you look at the uh, name column length, it is 50. I'm going to change it to 100. Okay, so we are changing the length. And then finally, let's drop that table. Okay, so now within our table changes audit table, we should have two entries. Let's see if that's what we have there. So select star from table changes. When we execute that, notice that we have two entries, and the first entry is alter table. So we have the name of the database, the name of the table, the event type, the login name associated, and the exact transact SQL, the audit date and time. Now, you know, this table is created in sample DB database. Now let's go ahead and create this table in a different database and see if it's going to be audited. So we have this HRDB database. So I'm going to create a table in that database. So let's execute that. And now if we come back and select the data, we should have another entry. And look at the database name here, HRDB create table. And this is the exact transact SQL date, uh, command. And here is the date and time. So here we have that audit table changes trigger. Thank you for listening and have a great day.